All right, you are welcome again. Today, we are still considering Laplace transform. And under Laplace transform, let's look at the basic properties of Laplace. And then we are going to be taking the properties one after the other and then take some examples in some of them. Okay, now let's take a look at the first property of Laplace transform. The first property is called linearity property. Linearity property. What does this property state or what is the theorem concerning this property? This linearity property states that if C1 and C2 are any constants, why F1 of T and f2 of t are functions with Laplace transform f1 of s and f2 of s respectively, then the Laplace transform of c1 f1 of t plus c2 f2 of t is equal to c1 Laplace transform of f1 of t plus c2 the Laplace transform of f2 of t and then it's still the same as c1 f1 of s plus c2 f2 of s hello please carefully i want you to look at this linearity property and then we are going to prove this you know looking at this it's just like telling you that when you have an integral and the integral is having a constant you take the constant behind the integral sign. Okay? The same thing applies here. When you have a Laplace transform, and the Laplace transform has a constant or constant, you can simply take the constant behind the Laplace. So that is called the linearity property. Let's take a look at uh, the proof. You see, if we can grab one or two things here now let's go first of all we are going to say let the laplace transform of f1 of t let it be equal to f1 of s okay that is when we transform f1 of t what it will give us should be f1 of s okay you see this laplace symbol we call it laplace transform operator so when this laplace is operated on f1 of t the outcome should be f1 of s okay so when we see this f1 of s or f of s we should know that this is a laplace transform okay it has been transformed already okay now and then we say that it is the same as the integral from zero to infinity e raised to the power of minus st f1 of t dt all right good and then again let's go again we say if we have Laplace transform of f2 of t, you know, it's the same as f2 of s, f2 of s, all right? Good. And then we say that it's still the same thing as saying the integral from 0 to infinity, e raised to the power of minus st, f2 of t, okay, dt. And then we say that it's the same as saying the integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus st f2 of t dt. Okay? And then again we say if this c1 and c2 are any constants. Now, first of all, we try to explain what we mean by the Laplace transform of f1 of t and f2 of t. By definition, this is what we have, okay? Now, let's introduce the constants now. Introducing the constants, we are going to have the Laplace transform of C1 F1 of T plus C2 F2 of T. Do you get this? Now, you know, it's still the same thing as say the integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus ST. Open brackets now, you know, the F of our F of T now. In place of f of t now, we replace this uh, function inside the bracket c1 f1 of t plus c2 f2 of t. You get right? Now we say the t. Now let's go. 
you know, we say it's still the same as saying the integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus st, over bracket, c1 f1 of t dt. We are taking the individual integral. All right, good. Here now we say the integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus st, c2 f2 of t dt. All right, good. Now let's go. In each of these integral, we have the constants. All right, good. Integrating when you have a constant, what do you do with the constant? You take it behind the integral sign. So the constant we have here is c1 and c2 in the function f1 of t and f2 of t. So we take the c1 and c2 that are constant behind the integral sign. So when we do so, what are we going to have? We're going to have c1, the integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus st f1 of t dt plus c2, the integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus st f2 of t dt. All right, good. Now let's go. You know, from our definition when we started, we said that the Laplace transform of f1 of t is the same as what? The integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus st f1 of t dt. And then here we're having the same thing here. So that means we can say that this is the same thing as saying the Laplace transform of f1 of t. You get? Good. Now, to the second one also, this, the integral from 0 to infinity e raised to the power of minus st f2 of t dt is the definition of the Laplace transform of f2 of t. Okay, so here we write, we have c1, the Laplace transform of f1 of t, plus we have c2, the Laplace transform of f2 of t. Do you get? Good. And then again, we say it, when we perform this uh, Laplace transform operator on a function, it should give us f of s. Okay, so the Laplace transform of f1 of t should give us f1 of s. Okay, and then the second one, the Laplace transform of f2 of t should give us f2 of s. So here we have c1, f1 of s plus c2, f2 of s. Do you get now, we also go further, we say that this result is easily extended to more than two functions. You know, in this case now, we had two functions, right? You can have as many functions as possible, having the constant to them. So, the same thing we apply here, when you have a constant inside a function, okay, and you are to take the Laplace transform of it, the same way you take the constant outside the integral sign is the same way you take a constant outside a Laplace transform. Hello. Now, let me, let me take an example. Let's see what I'm trying to say. For instance, let's say we are asked to find the Laplace transform of uh, 4t squared minus 3 cos 2t plus 5e raised to the power of minus t. Okay, this is what we are asked to do. We are asked to find the Laplace transform. So now what we do here is this. We have constant inside the given functions. We are going to take the constant outside and take the individual Laplace transform of these variables. Hello. We are going to take their what? Individual Laplace transform. We are going to take their Laplace transform individually. So look at what, I, what I'm trying to say. The first variable here, we have 4t squared. Then 4 is a constant. We take it behind and then take the Laplace transform of the variable t squared. So we have 4, the Laplace transform of t squared. The next one, we have 3 cos 2t. 3 is a constant. We take it behind. Then we have minus 3. Then we take the Laplace transform of cos 2t. Then we say Laplace transform of cos 2t. Then we say plus 5, we take it behind. Then we have the Laplace transform of e raised to the power of minus t. Hello? Is that clear? Yes. Now let's go. You know, uh, from our previous video, I am very sure we know how to solve the Laplace transform of these elementary functions like t, t squared, 
cos 80 sin 80 e raised to the power of 80 and all that all right good now look at this here we have t square you know we treated one of them we say tn tn is giving you uh n factorial all over s raised to the power of n plus one all right so applying it here now uh the laplace transform of t square what is going to give you it's going to give you two factorial all over s cube okay and then we have four outside then coming to the second one we have minus three and we take the laplace transform of course 2t i'm very sure you know how to do that right good you know i showed you in a previous video how to do it using two basic methods please if you have not gotten that clearly please i want you to watch the video and then get familiar with it okay now let's go the laplace transform of course 2t is going to give you s all over s squared plus 4 okay it's supposed to be s okay when you have cos a t it's going to give you s all over s squared plus a squared okay but in this case now we have our a to be what to be 2 so in place of a squared we have 2 squared it will give us 4 so here we have minus 3 over bracket s all over s squared plus 4 then we have plus then the laplace transform of e raised to the power of minus t you know in the previous one we treated e raised to the power of a t and then you know what it gives you so here now we are going to have one all over s plus one all right good let's use this constant outside the bracket to multiply so when we multiply we're going to have the first one two factorial is the same as two then multiply by four constant outside is going to give us eight all over s cube then we have minus we will say three times s is going to give us three s all over s squared plus four then the next one we have plus we will say five times one is going to give us five all over s plus one i think this is what we call the linearity property in laplace transform what is it talking about just like in a normal integration when you have a constant you take the constant behind the integral sign also in laplace transform when you have a constant attached to a function you take it behind the laplace transform is that clear yes let's take more examples or more properties more basic properties of laplace transform 